stop automatically in three minutes. If you see that, could you pass it? Oh, yeah. Generalizations for Egypt or for Tunisia or for Morocco, it can't apply. And we're looking at the politics of class, people who are rich and poor, uh, color, ethnicity, uh, race, and what type of religion people have, sex and gender, which are different, fashion, culture, age, ability, values, and other differences. Okay, so this will be the subject that we're really looking at. Is everything as antiseptic as it looks? Like everyone's happy, you know, all different colors, united colors. Okay, if you have something you want to say, you know, just raise your hand very high so I can see you and just speak up. Okay? Because, uh, or fear that maybe 10 people want to talk at the same time. But please, feel free. So, I'll go through the introduction, give you the main points, and then the points. This cheat sheet summarizes everything. That's what I'll be talking today. We'll do a just a preliminary workshop. Again, this is safe zone. If you don't want to say the truth, you can lie. Or you can decide not to raise your hand. It's totally up to you. But I hope you will all raise your hand, even if you lie. Okay? It's totally okay. Okay, if you think you are rich, raise your hand. It's okay, huh? It's okay. Uh, if you think you're poor, raise your hand. Okay. My hand is higher than yours. I'm poor than you are. Okay, if you are, I think you're white. Raise your hand. Okay, if you think you're colored, I raise my hand. Okay. And if you you are Christian, raise your hand. If you're not Christian, raise your hand. All right. If you are male, raise your hand. If you're female, raise your hand. Okay. If you are straight, raise your hand. If you are LGBT. Y A, raise your hand. Okay. And if you are fashion victim, that means you have to wear Adidas and you have to wear Prada, you have to wear all these proper brands. Raise your hand. Okay. And if you don't give a damn about brands, raise your hand. 
<laughs> and if your culture is kind of mainstream, like uh, you wear khaki, you're male, I don't know what kind of female wear, your button down shirt, all cotton, stuff like that, raise your hand. Okay, and if you, you don't care, you can have your hair in dress, or you'll wear like, you know, I don't golf, I wear as I please. Raise your hand. Okay, or like Kesha, you know. Okay, Kesha, that's okay. Okay, and uh, if you are a young adult, raise your hand. If you're old like me or a minor, raise your hand. <laughs> and if you are able, mm -hmm. or you have some disability, okay. and you like competition, I have to be number one, my grade has to be this, I have to have honors, my resume should be this thing, okay. Or you say, why don't we just help each other? Okay, raise your hand. And then, if you're tall and slim, like, uh, you know, the, the standard stereotype of a fashion model, Okay. If you're like me, short and fat, raise your hand. Okay, so come to my point. Okay, so think about these differences. And we will see how power comes into the picture. You have books written by uh, Michelle Alexander. You have to buy the book if you don't have it already. The New Jim Crow. And then Bell Hooks, Feminism. Interesting. Uh, and then Slavo Zizek. Somebody. I'll put this PowerPoint on SlideShare, type my name and title, maybe by Monday it will be out. SlideShare or academia.edu, you can download this by Monday. Okay, so introduction. Uh, there are many problems of, uh, with which we're confronted in society today. Social safety net, no, we're getting less and less of it, and we're demonizing Muslims and undocumented people, problems with the right to uh, reproductive health of women, health care cuts, and the problem that's already been shut down of the government, the debate over, you know, originally they said they want some discussion on Obamacare, corporate tax breaks, attack on labor unions, tax cuts for the rich, gay right restriction, although some more and more gay rights are recognized in different states, cuts to education, destruction of the environment. So these are some of the main problems with which we're confronted. And then you have, in general, two sets of people. But this is just dichotomous model. In reality, it's more fluid, right? And more complex uh, in society. More problems. We have the widening gap of the rich and the poor. We have statistics, we will show you later, that more and more people are getting poorer and poorer. Jobs are just not there. Uh, Factory jobs, which would have union wages, are now all abroad. No unions, not like China. And what's left would be fast food jobs. For many people, it's a career. Okay, uh, and there's discrimination against people who are working in the fast food industry. That's why they're working for union rights. And people who look different, undocumented people of color, there's uh, discrimination against people of color and undocumented, and also Muslims. And it's a few rich that rule uh, the US society. So problem, uh, many of the minorities are invisible or misrepresented. Question where we'll try to raise and answer in our session would be, number one, who have power and privilege in the US? And number two, who don't have power and privilege? So our role is to identify uh, who they are uh, for the power and then to empower those who don't have the power, the how to go about. So power is defined by Michel Foucault as the ability of A to affect the action of B. Okay? And then power is related to knowledge. Certain type of power produces certain type of knowledge. So knowledge is not neutral, as we always say it is. Okay? If you read Michel Foucault's uh, writing. And privilege, from the etymology dictionary, means the advantage of one group of people have over the others. That's it. We'll get rid of the definition. And now we we'll look at certain case studies, pop culture. Uh, we have no time for video clips, but we'll see some memes. Mm -hmm. Let's bring in <laughs> and the internet. I know you love it. There are two ways by which you can look at the world. 
The first one is the so-called uncritical theory. Most of the theories we read in school are uncritical. They say there's one way by which you can look at the world, and it's neutral. We just have measurements, if X then B, no, whatever. And we'll come up with results. Everything is universal. All people are alive. Just give me statistics. And we'll just say how many people said this, how many people said that. On the other hand, there's another set of theories saying that's not true. There are, for instance, women, there are lesbians, there are gays, there are poor people, there are people of color. Each one is a different way of looking at the world. And we should not be ashamed of it. We should, in fact, be proud of it. That would be part of postmodernism and critical theory, among others. And saying we should be taking sides, partisanship. We should not be afraid to say, I am, let's say, brown. And this is how I look at the world. I'm a brown male. And these are the good and bad experiences I had, etc., uh, with the others. So we're looking at the critical theory side. And things we would look at, therefore, are color, wealth, and a gender role in society and who has power and who are oppressed. If you look at uh, critical theory, uh, Miriam Caffarella and Baumgartner's book. So what are the findings? If you look at this, we'll skip through some and go through some together. First, is the general human uh, power. Human animals over non-human animals. Okay, for example, we think that all animals should please us. We, we capture lions and tigers and monkeys and chimpanzees and elephants. We beat them up. We want them, or horses behave one way or the other to please us, like in circus. And you know, we raise hogs, 98% of which are from factory farms. This is how they look. They can't even move around. They just stand. Okay? And this is how you get your down pillow, make you comfortable at night. Let's pop them while they're alive. There's a video link. If you download this, you can see the link. How they do that. And we eat them, we wear them, we do experiments on them, and we have fun with them. Okay? And we drink milk from them. Okay? So we do all kinds of things, and we have our leather jacket from them. So it's the human power over the rest of nature. And you want to wear Prada, okay, or then maybe people have to skin a living snake to get the leather. And in Spain, there's the bull run, and 100 women are raped in four days, on the average, every year. Okay. And we think that all animals should make us happy. Well, usually it's cat or dog, but sometimes it's more exotic animals too. This is from Latin America. Or, uh, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> but the world is on fire. We just kill and butcher and destroy as we wish. Right? So we just thought that we're the masters of the universe. So what happens? Global climate change. Something has to be done. And Vandana Shiva is a very well known environmentalist. She's a physicist from India. She's very well sought after to give uh, speaking engagements all over the US, Europe, Canada. And she's written about our link to nature and talk with GMOs. What's GMO? Yeah, genetically modified organism, food, yeah. Okay. And, okay, so we're done with the human power. Now we're looking at the appearance, culture, fashion, physique, and so on. So in the U.S. culture, we're taught you have to be the summa cum laude, the valedictorian, you have to have honors, join this honor society and you eke up, you pay $40 or $70 a year or something. And then you take a photo and then next year you pay again, right? Okay, so it's on my resume. So we really, we, me too, I did that too, you know, we're, we're in the same boat. So we're competitive, all of us, all of us, including me, I'm saying, you know, uh, do that because this is how we're told. We compete, we have to be number one. There's no such thing as number two, right? They said, you are there to win, like, hello, what's number two? Nothing. This is what we're told. You have to win whatever, basketball, whatever it is, piano. If you're number two in piano competition, you're nothing. It hurts, right? It doesn't because that's how you're told to think. It's just number one. Okay, and we blame other people for 
mistakes. This is a cartoon okay, from the internet. These two women are saying,